Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Hey, Prime Attack employees. Thanks for reporting for duty. Uh, Welcome to Prime Attack Files, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things heroes and its sister slash sequel show, Heroes Reborn. I'm Lil, and on the hunt for specials with me is... Ricky. Yo, yo, yo. Up for the session (laughs) today is episode 315, Trust and Blood. Mm, That's ominous, no? Mm, Blood. (laughs) Let's just get right into the recap. The original air date for this episode is February 9th, 2009. It was written by Mark Verheiden and directed by Alan R. Crush, the synopsis. Following a chain of unexpected events, the heroes are on the run from Nathan and Danko. A series of paintings reveals the tragic fate of someone close to Matt. Elsewhere, Sila continues his search for his father and encounters an outcast with information and ability of his own. I like how they called Danko the hunter for like a while. I think that was even like part of the pre, not the pre, like the the kind of build up to like fugitives. They were saying someone has been cast as the hunter, and they didn't even give him a name. I remember that. Well, major plot points and players. I think you pretty much nailed all of that, except for basically Peter finally fully explains his abilities. The only thing that I would add to that. Yeah, I suppose. Important. Places, people, and or things. Luke Campbell. No, not the rapper from Miami. (laughs) And microwave emissions, which was basically his power. Let's just start with the big massive plane crash and how everyone kind of splits off into there. So yeah, I guess we'll start with that. Okay. So it's Matt Matt Mohander and Hero. They're all hiding in the same ditch together. And uh, Matt, this is where they start to explain everything, because obviously, even though we know most of this stuff, most of the characters don't know much about each other. How did you feel about Matt and Mohinder being back together? It was bittersweet. Mohinder's changed. He's not good enough for my baby Matt anymore. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't like, Matt, how come you got, like, the house, the apartment, and the divorce, <laughs> and, and all I got was a loft? <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, Hero gets to explain that he doesn't have his powers anymore to Mohinder, and Matt does his why I things and walk away, walks away, and they all follow him. So yes, they follow him to a trailer park where he sees a Sutu at a door. He goes inside, comes out with a paper and a box of pens, and starts scribbling. And go onto our Twitter feed, and you will see a picture of him actually scribbling. Um, and then I guess we'll get onto everyone how they all meet up, but we'll end that there. So yeah. Okay, so then we see Ando, who's trying to book a flight to Russellville, Arkansas, and I'm like, sweetie, no. <laughs> you don't want to go to Russellville, Arkansas. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> After tracking Hero's GPS signal, but then the other person on the phone seems to have never heard of Russellville, and I go, yeah, they probably don't have an airport. You probably have to catch a cab from, like, Little Rock. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Daphne shows up as Ando hangs up the phone. She's trying to find Matt and figure Hero and Ando might be able to help. Ando hears Matt disappeared as well. When he hears that, he's like, oh, the people who kidnapped Hero, they got Matt too. Let's work together, Nemesis. I like the fact that he still calls her Nemesis as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you know her name. She was there when you got powers. It's better than <laughs> a thorn her... in my ass, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get onto that big bit, but that's basically what happens with them. Peter and Claire. Uh, Oh, it's kind of, yeah, Peter and Claire and then Peter and Tracy. But yeah, Peter and Claire obviously are coupled up and running away. And um, HRG catches up with them, 
takes away Claire and lets Peter run off, which I think is kind of nice because obviously he knows that Peter's always been there protecting Claire like all the time. Um, it kind of feels like he kind of has a loyalty to Peter because of Claire. And it's like the second time he's kind of been protected. You know, HRG's protected Peter twice in the past couple of episodes. So, yeah. And then HRG brings Claire back to her bio dad and Danko. And this is where I ask myself, how many times can this girl get like a second chance? She's, you know, she's escaped them. She's come back. She's been brought back. And then Nathan just like take her away. If I'm Danko, I'm exactly the same. I'm like, why don't we just deal with this matter? <laughs> so, yeah. How do you feel about Danko at the moment? Because I feel like he's kind of a generic bad guy at this moment and he's just being rushed into this kind of... I don't think that it was rushed. It's kind of this natural thing. Uh, you know, you can kind of tell that he's just an old spook and he kind of is gleefully into his job, which is yeah. something that I, I can appreciate in, in the bad guy. He's clearly meant to be the bad guy. So, you know, yeah, it's a little forced contrived drama, but come on. I'd want a lot clearer up too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. Um, yes, and obviously, you know, Peter runs into Tracy, and I don't know where this was going, because Trace, like, him and Tracy start working together, and they get Nathan to kind of come and meet them, and I don't know whether, like, Tracy was starting to drink the Kool-Aid that, um, Nathan was feeding her about it, but, yeah, what do you think? I thought Tracy was really stupid at this point, like, she's, <laughs> she's the new Claire, I just want to go back to my old life, I just want things back to way, how they were. That that's my only opinion about Tracy for these next couple of episodes. Do you think she would have sold him out? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> she's 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 a p political aid. Hell's yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then she gets taken away. Um, I think she's very selfish. Um, you know, she's only obviously thinking about herself. But yeah, her and Nathan would have made an amazing power couple. Oh, they kind of teased it, but yeah, you know, they ain't, they ain't no going back now. But yeah. <laughs> Nathan saw the trap coming, though. He's just like... I know, right? Yeah, he was like, did you think I was going to come alone? But yeah, that's when we obviously see that Nathan, like, HRG's been protecting Peter again because he obviously had the shot and didn't take it. But in this episode, we get the explanation of um, Peter's powers. Um, he has to touch them. Yes. And then he flies off and he ends up meeting with the superhero team of him, Parkman, uh, a powerless hero and... Uh, Mahinda. I kind of like it. I kind of like the fact that he comes in, he's just like straight up like running the show. It, you know, he's the leader of this like little ragtag group. But, you know, once it, this being heroes, they give you a tease of like there being a super group and then uh, they, they split them the off. <laughs> yeah. He says a line. He says, um, you know, he starts talking about what they have to do. Like, obviously, cars they can't use. They can't use phones, all that kind of stuff. And then he ends with, do what we need to do to survive. And I think that's kind of telling of where he's at at the moment. Because he's, it seems like they, they wanted to try and bring him into that kind of morally grey kind of character. Um, which I would have really liked. But, you know, this is Peter we're talking about. Uh, then we kind of catch, like, it's about... 42 hours later and he's on the phone talking to someone and at the end of the conversation obviously it's his mother and yeah. they're talking about Peter because he's gonna he's like he's gonna eventually come and he's like will you do the right thing and she basically just hangs up I don't know how I felt about this phone call I thought it was kind of unnecessary the only kind of spot that it kind of feels necessary is when they kind of everyone converges back on the plane crash site which I must add which we I think we skipped over they they launch a missile at and <laughs> yes. yeah um because you know that's a good idea but yeah they all converge on the site and that's where um everything like doo doo hits the fan because obviously daphne gets shot and parkman kind of just Loses it. goes crazy and but then they also bring up the kind of fate and fate again like obviously you know daphne and ando were talking and they're like well we know hero's alive because obviously he uh you kill him in the future and that kind of that kind of left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth because obviously we've have you watched the ep the series flash forward yeah of course and they had that one guy who was like well you know this is going to happen in the future and he was just like well i'm not going to have it and he just kills himself yeah i can't remember it's um the guy who plays cyborg in um in a uh, smallville but yeah uh the famous joe jackson <laughs> yeah. that's how he will always be known to me 
Rest his soul. <laughs> I don't think that the phone call was kind of necessary at all. I just think it only served a purpose for that one thing. But the rest of it, I thought it kind of, it messed with the kind of flow of the episode because it kept on cutting back. But what do you think? I like it because it's just basically working Angela up to the point where she's got a five on Danko now. And she's in his, she he's in her sights. And I'm like, oh, Mama patella has got something for you, <laughs> mister. <laughs> so that was like the only thing that I could see really the point of it is just like to get Angela's blood all worked up because eventually later on in this season we see where this pushes her to a point where she has to tell a secret because <laughs> yeah, the, the history is repeating itself kind of sort of okay so basically we're gonna go to Siler now in Newark New Jersey he's kidnapped Agent Simmons in like some house that was near his dad's taxidermy shop yeah. Then like so it's this lady named Mary and her son Luke and they come home and it's just like he's done torturing the soldier. He's gonna torture Mary and Luke to get the agent to tell him what he wants to know. He doesn't do a very good job because he um well no, he does kind of start doing a good job, but then he start then um Luke reveals that he has powers and they kind of seem like they kind of kindred spirits or, you know, it's kind of like a sidekick for Silo, which I kind of liked the idea of him having a sidekick. But yeah, he ends up, you know, using his powers quite a lot. And by powers, I mean the power of lie detection and just uses it to kind of twist Luke into kind of, I don't know if he's twisting Luke into coming with him, but, you know, he's obviously not enamored, but, you know, he kind of is intrigued by this kid and the kid has something that he know that he needs. Information. And, Yes. So, yeah, they end up road trip. So, yeah. Yeah, in the stolen mom's car. Yes. This kid, this, oh my God, I love this kid, by the way. Um, He was in one of my favorite TV shows that just didn't have a chance, uh, Aliens in America. Okay. Are they going to talk about Cougar Town? He's in Cougar Town. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't like that. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, and then and, back in Costa Verde at the yes. in it slash Butler house. Sandra thinks Claire's been looking at colleges and then Claire's like, I don't want to go to, I want to go to school close to home. And Sandra's like, yay. And then Claire gets an anonymous text message from somebody called Rebel. <laughs> Ooh, who could that be? <laughs> to keep, keep fighting and not give up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's where we end the episode. When you, um, when you first watched the episode, who did you, did you? I instantly knew you... who it was. Uh, okay, I I had no clue, and that's how stupid I was. But yeah, um, yeah, well, we won't carry on about any of that. But yes, um, so I guess we'll go on to the the review. <laughs> Best character. Um, I think I may go for hero. Um, he doesn't have the most. Um, the biggest part in the episode, but it's just the little touches that he does, which kind of um, makes me appreciate him. Like, obviously, he's a hero without a power, and he's using, you know, he's using his quote unquote smarts to kind of get him, you know, he's he's got the 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 spirit of a hero, let's say, and um, and it's also the little things of like, you know, he'll say he says, you know, when he takes the clothes, I will take their address and I will send them money, and he says the same thing to the cab drive, the guy who brings them to the 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 hero meeting point. I kind of like that about him. So yeah, how about you? Um uh, I think I'm gonna go with Peter. Like he's finally not a lame duck anymore. Yes. Yes. I suppose, yeah. I haven't said Peter in a really long time. If, I mean especially if we're not including future Peter, it's been a long time. Yes, definitely. Um yeah I I you know what? I should have gone with future, uh, with future, with uh, Peter as well. But hero is always going to come first in my mind. But and yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, character interaction. Oh, Danko and Nathan, hands down. He's like, watch your back. You're not going to always be in charge. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I agree. I, I kind of agree with that, but I also want to say Peter and his ragtag group of heroes. Um, it's not so much an interaction, but it is. Um, it lays the groundwork for the rest of the season and also shows, you know, Peter in a better light. And they instantly start listening to him, even though he might not be the smartest one of them. Um, he just takes charge. And that's something that they need, especially with a team with 
the three people who he has. <laughs> so yeah. Um moment or scene? Shoot, this is a toughie. You wanna go first? I will go with I'll go with the the moment on the the big crescendo moment of people dying and just all hell breaking loose. It kind of remind like I think it kind of reminds me of the f the s the, ep the f episode before the ending. It just felt kind of really dramatic and really quite poignant, I guess, because obviously you know Matt's watching his missus get shot and he obviously thinks she's dead, um, and just the chaos that ensues from it. So yeah, how about you? Okay, I think mine has to be the quote unquote trap that Tracy and Peter try to set for Nathan. <laughs> Because <laughs> it just goes so horribly wrong. <laughs> it's just As really funny. Yeah. Um, and lines. I'll go with, uh, well, well, it's a small world after he sees Luke use his power. <laughs> yeah. When you saw him use his power for the first time, I thought he was using it on a Magneto doll until it turned around and just showed it was just a generic doll. But yeah. <laughs> um, I will go with um, Tracy at the end with... You're one of us, Nathan. You're one of us. One of us. <laughs> one. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, how does no one even question this? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, terrorists uh, will say anything, darling. I guess. <laughs> um, also in that, from that, I will go into a bit of trivia. Also in that, you kind of see Rachel in the background um, in that kind of armored truck. And Rachel is obviously the one from the recruit. So, yeah. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so, grade. what will you give this episode? Uh, this gets a B minus. And that's being a little bit generous. Oh, definitely. I, I'll go with a B minus as well. Um, it's not as good as the first episode, but it has its moments. And it's still, apart from the kind of Apart from the phone call bit, just kind of messing with the flow of it, it feels uh, it it flows quite well. So yeah. Oh, uh, for me, it's Siler's side quest. You know how I feel about side quests. I'm just glad yeah. that that hero at this point is the only saving grace for it. And mm. Sandra goes back to being a dummy. Like those are my yeah. two like negatives about the episode. I guess it kind of really brought it down for me. But other than that, I like the episode well enough. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, same here. It's it's quite good to be giving good grades again. <laughs> no, it's not such a like drag to be talking about it. Either. I know, right? It just makes the podcast go so much quicker. Like, recording this goes so much quicker. <laughs> anyway, um, we will move on to the graphic novel called Libertad. And <laughs> is that how, is that what, is that not how it's pronounced? <laughs> no, it's just really funny that they decided to say that, you know? Okay, fair enough. Um, it's basically... The comic just gives you a kind of context into the kind of the new world that they're living in. If I can compare it to anything, it's kind of the Heroes Reborn Dark Matters prequel. And it kind of leads you into what this kind of new world that Heroes is kind of setting up. And obviously people are disappearing in this comic and Rebel or the name Rebel is coming up and he's helping people. And that's kind of where most of the aspect of the episode, uh, where the comic, graphic novel. So yeah, the only bit of trivia I have is uh, Libertad was a political writing of Richard Drucker. Um, Micah Saunders hacked the CorinthiansLasVegas.com uh, website and found a poster advertising it. So yes. Um, I just, I love the cover of it. It's Viva La, Ver Viva La Veritad and it's like rebel yeah. and be saved. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then the angry skunk bar, of course, where Hero got punched out of by the bartender. Where Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where Adam let him. So, yeah, it was just kind of, like, really cool, fun, like, callbacks in this one. Uh, the story is by DJ Doyle. The art was by Marcus, too. Ooh, nice to see you again, sir. And the <laughs> Easter egg was a behind-the-scenes image of the ragtag team of uh, uh, Peter, Parkman, Ando, Hero, and Mohinder. So we will move on to emails. Uh, I have an email from our favorite English idiot, 101. 
She says, the first episode was a really good start. I liked how it showed what happened after the villain's volume and the capturing of specials. Silas' story is too different. I kind of don't like it. The best scene is the end when the play goes down, plane goes down. Uh, I loved how they filmed it and edited it. Uh, the second episode wasn't as good, but I did like the tense atmosphere of it all. I really like Claire in this volume and the length she goes to to save her friends. Overall, I really like the beginning of this volume. So let's see how she feels about the rest of the volume. <laughs> it, it does make a, I will say in advance, if this is your first time like watching and stuff, it, it does take like a weird turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like a <abrupt laughs> weird turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will move on to the live tweets. So we had the following people joining along with the live tweet. They're either tweeting, retweeting, or faving during the live tweets. We have T3 Filler. Uh, Naga is my BFF. Paraceline, English Idiot 101, Pope underscore Melissa, Soft underscore Guitar 60. Thank you all for joining in. Looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion. We'll start with the show contact info. We here at Prima Tech Files love listener feedback. If you would like to get a hold of us, we have a ton of ways. You can email us via PrimaTechFiles at gmail.com. You can leave us a private message or interact with our posts over on facebook.com forward slash Primatech Files. We live tweet two episodes per week every Saturday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For more information, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Primatech Files. You can also find us on Clamor, Tumblr, and YouTube by simply searching for Primatech Files. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. What's that? You don't have an iTunes account? That's okay. We're on a lot of podcaster services such as Stitcher and SoundCloud. All you have to do is search for, you guessed it, Primatech Files. We're also on Lib- Libsyn. And if you want to follow our RSS feed there, all you have to do is go to primatechfiles.libsyn.com and bookmark the site to stay up to date with this podcast. Libsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, just in case you were wondering. We look forward to interacting with you. If you love our podcast, be sure to check out Southgate Media Group's iTunes provider page to see a list of what other podcasts are hot and trending in our network. Or you can take that one step further and visit southgatemediagroup.com where you can find a full list of our 80 plus podcasts along with weekly blogs and information about all the hosts. With so many podcasts that cover everything from anime to wrestling, there's sure to be tons of podcasts that can interest you. Hey guys, you should know by now that you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. If you have a Tumblr, be sure to check out it's lilithhellfire.tumblr.com. And of course, be sure to swing by my blog if you are a pop culture junkie or comic book geek at littlepopculturevulture.blogspot.com. I also host several other podcasts on the Southgate Media Group Network. Some of them are The Flashpoint. Queen Consolidated and Channel 52. So if you are into, obviously, DC comic book related stuff, be sure to check it out. You can find my writings at tvbinges.com. It's a place for all your binge watching needs and you can also create your own TV binge and we'll help promote it. We do a monthly binge watch, which you're more than welcome to join in. Just go to their Twitter at tvbinges just to find out more information. You can find me on Twitter at Ricky J D S. That's R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z or Z if you're American. And finally, we're here at the wrap up. We want to uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed our discussion of, episode, of this episode. I want to remind you to keep sending in those emails. Keep Charlie's emails company maybe in the inbox. Yes. Um, don't, don't be afraid to like and comment on our Facebook posts. And if you have time on Saturdays, you join in on our live tweets. If you want more information, you can either find it on our Twitter, Twitter, or Facebook. Download the podcast, Save the World.